Hello everybody, welcome to another Yellow Chair Devotional. We're going to look at another book of the Bible together. We have been journeying through a category of books that we've called the Pauline Epistles, which is just a fancy way of saying the letters of Paul. All right, so we looked at Romans, we looked at 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and now the book of Colossians. So Paul, who was he? He was an apostle, which means that he was sharing the good news, the gospel of Jesus everywhere he went. And he traveled as a missionary. He went to so many of these different towns. He started up churches. He made friends. He was telling everyone the good news of what Jesus had done in his life. He was being a witness, sharing his testimony. And we saw yesterday in the letter to the church in Philippi, Paul wrote that from prison. And the same with Colossians. So grab your Bible. Let's turn there together. So Paul is in prison because he's telling everybody about Jesus. and Other people didn't like that very much. And so I think that's a lesson right there that sometimes when we're sharing what Jesus has done in our lives, we're going to run up against I guess hardship, or we're going to maybe have people who don't like that we're talking about Jesus, or maybe you've even had moments in your life where, oh, it's really weird to be a Christian, or, oh, you go to church on Saturday? That's different. Have you ever had those moments where maybe you didn't want people to know that you believed in Jesus? Maybe you were a little bit embarrassed. Well, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. He, was, he could be thrown in prison. He could have people after him. He could... Anything could happen and Paul would not stop telling people about what Jesus had done in his life because you cannot have an encounter with Jesus and not be changed. And so anytime where we find ourselves maybe feeling embarrassed or it's not cool to have a relationship with Jesus, we have to remember, is there an enemy trying to discourage us? Absolutely. And we do not listen to the lies of the enemy. Those lies that say, oh, you'd be so much cooler if you didn't hang out with Jesus. Oh, why don't you quit doing that? You, you know, you should just not pay attention during church or Sabbath school or any of those other things. Who cares if you memorize a memory verse? Oh, no, no, we don't listen to the lies of the enemy. We know that we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. So why would we want to be with anyone other than Jesus? He's the best friend that we could ever have. Mm. All right, so in the book of Colossians, Paul is writing to the church in Colossae, I think is how you say it. And he's writing from prison and he's not letting it rain on his parade. He's not letting it rain on his parade. And we can learn a lot from Paul about that when it comes to living out our lives for Jesus. And so the thing about the ch this church is like a lot of these churches that we've been seeing in the letters that Paul has written, they've run up against, how do we be a church? Being a Christian, this is a brand new thing. I mean... Maybe people were, were Greek and they went to um, a Greek temple. Maybe they were a Jew and they went to the synagogue. Now we're all believe in Jesus. How do we worship? How do we do this thing? And the church in Colossae, they were having the fancy word is they were having like heretical teachings. So that let's let's choose some silly examples. This would be like if I were in church with you and I started saying and telling everybody, you have to wear the color blue on Sabbath to church, otherwise you can't go to heaven. I mean, I've been reading the Greek and the Hebrew. We have to wear the color blue, otherwise we can't go to heaven. Now is that silly? Oh, that's so silly, right? There's nothing about that in the Bible anywhere, anywhere. But sometimes we like to get on our little high horse and be saying what we think is the way to have a relationship with Jesus when it's totally different than what the Bible says. We always rely on God's word. And so the church in Colossae, they were struggling because other people were saying, well, this is how we should have church. Or this is how we worship. No, this is the way to do it. No, this is the way to do it. And it became this type of a thing, right? No, do it my way. No, do it my way. And Paul is going, no, 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 no. Knock it off. Let's turn our eyes and our focus back to Jesus. Okay? It's always about Jesus. So hopefully you found the book of Colossians by now. Pause if you need more time to get there. But we're going to read Colossians starting in verse 9. 
So chapter one, starting in verse nine, here is what Paul says. Since the day we heard this about you, we have continued praying for you. We ask God that you will know fully what God wants. We pray that you will also have great wisdom and understanding in spiritual things. Then you will live the kind of life that honors and pleases the Lord in every way. You will produce fruit in every good work and grow in the knowledge of God. Then God will strengthen you with his own great power and you will not give up when troubles come, but you will be patient. Then you will joyfully give thanks to the Father. He has made you able to have all that he has prepared for his people who live in the light. God made us free from the power of darkness, and he brought us into the kingdom of his dear Son. The Son paid for our sins, and in him we have forgiveness. All right, so Paul is telling him here, hey, I'm praying for you guys. Be encouraged. I'm hoping that God, he's continuing to work in you and do amazing things. Give thanks for this. And then I love how verse 13, God made us free from the powers of darkness, right? Don't get trapped in the lies of the enemy saying, no, do it this way. No, do it this way. Because what did we say about the enemy? He's always trying to divide us, divide, 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 fall into those lies. No, 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 no. We are free from the power of darkness. We have brought, been brought into the kingdom of Jesus. And it says, because Jesus paid for our sins, we have forgiveness. We're good. We're safe. We're saved. Now let's read verse 15. No one has seen God, but Jesus is exactly like him. Christ ranks higher than all the things that have been made. Through his power, all things were made. Things in heaven and on earth, things seen and unseen, all powers, authorities, lords, and rulers, all things were made through Christ and for Christ. Christ was there before anything was made, and all things continue because of him. He is the head of the body. The body is the church. Everything comes from him, and he is the first one who was raised from death. So in all things, Jesus is most important. God was pleased for all of himself to live in Christ, and through Christ, God decided to bring all things back to himself again, things on earth and things in heaven. God made peace by using the blood of Christ's death on the cross. All right, we're going to talk about that chunk in just a second. Let's read the next few verses. At one time, you were separated from God. You were God's enemies in your minds because the evil things you did were against God. But now Christ has made you God's friends again. He did this by his death while he was in the body that he might bring you into God's presence. He brings you before God as people who are holy, with no wrong in you, and with nothing that God can judge you guilty of. And Christ will do this if you continue to believe in the good news you heard. You must continue strong and be sure in your faith. You must not be moved away from the hope the good news gave you. The same good news has been told to everyone in the world. I, Paul, help in preaching that good news. Oh, I love those verses because how often does the enemy attack us and make us feel all sorts of things? And what do we need to remember? Because of Jesus, we're God's friends. And it says here, he brings you before God as people who are holy with no wrong in you and with nothing that God can judge you guilty of. Because that's what the lies of the enemy do. The lies of the enemy wants me to think there's something wrong with me. Oh, you're not holy enough to, to be with God. Oh, God's going to find you guilty. You messed up. You did this thing. You did that thing. Those are always lies of the enemy because it says here, because of Jesus, he brings us to God wearing his robes of righteousness. And verse 23 says, and Christ will do this if we continue to believe. All we got to do is believe in the good news, the gospel. We just believe in the good news, which is Jesus. We believe in Jesus and we're good. We're still going to mess up. We live on this earth like that, but we are not defined by that as much as the enemy tries. And so we don't have to be afraid that God's going to judge us and find us guilty. No, 
God loves us. God is our best friend. He goes, oh, I am so excited. You believe in Jesus. That's amazing. You want to have that love in your heart. You want to love me in return. God goes, oh, come and spend forever and ever with me. I want to be your friend. I love you. So we've got to remember, we reject those lies that come from the enemy because he's trying to divide us. Now, in this Bible, for verses 15 to 20, that's this little chunk here. Do you see how it kind of just looks like the rest of my Bible? It just looks like a bunch of words, right? But I'm going to show you this passage in a different Bible because I want you to see something here. All right, so here's verses 15 to 20 again. But do you see how the other parts, it's like words, words, words. And here, what, what does this remind you of? What does that remind you of? Maybe a poem or a song? It's a song. It kind of looks like how when we were looking in Psalms or Proverbs, this is a song. And what people think is that at verse 15 to 20, people believe that this was a hymn that was common, that was being sung in the new Christian churches. Just like maybe, you know, you could probably go to any church in the world and start singing Amazing Grace or Jesus Loves Me and people would start singing along, right? Because they know that song. This was a song that the new Christian church was using. They were singing and worshiping. Everyone would have known this song. And Paul, he's trying to remind them, remember they are being divided over different teachings. They're being divided by the enemy. And he starts he has this song in there. Maybe Paul even sang it when it was being written down, right? But he quotes this song so that people would hear it. Because when we're singing together, are we united? We even breathe at the same time when we're singing together, don't we? It brings us together. It unites us. And this song is all about the fact that it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And so if we were to reread verses 15 to 20, and if I were to make a list of the things that it's reminding us about Jesus, here's maybe what would be on my list. Jesus is God. He is the image of God, right? God's invisible. We haven't seen God, but because we, we saw Jesus, we know who God is. Jesus, he is the firstborn of all creation. He was there from the very beginning. And he is here with us now because he is the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. He is before all things. He is the one who holds all things together. Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus is the beginning. Jesus is the one in whom every fullness of God dwells. Jesus is the reconciler. That means he brings us reconciled wearing his robes of righteousness to God. And Jesus is the ultimate peacemaker. And so this song is all about who Jesus is. That was Paul's response for a church that was being divided, that was struggling, where they were maybe getting stuck listening to the lies of the enemy. Paul goes, no, no, no. Let's bring our eyes back to Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Jesus is the one who created us. Jesus is the one who died for us, was risen from the grave. He had victory over the serpent, Satan. He loves us. He wants us to believe in him. He holds everything together. And someday he's coming again. And so everything is about Jesus. And that is the good, good news. Let's say a prayer together and close our time. Dear Jesus, it is all about you. There's times when we get trapped listening to the divisive lies of the enemy. We found our, we find ourselves struggling or we, we have a different view of you and it's not true. May we reject those lies and instead come to you with our hearts believing in the good news of who you are. And we thank you so much for your love in your name. Amen. All right, there's discussion questions in the video description below. And our takeaway verse for Colossians is verse uh, chapter 1, verse 17, where it says that Jesus, he is before all things, and by him all things are held together. 
all things are held together. You know, it reminds me of a song. He's got the whole world in his hands, holds everything together. What's a song that you would want to sing or listen to or play to worship Jesus today? Maybe take a few minutes and explore. Sing a song. Think about what song would remind me all about Jesus when I am getting trapped in the lies of the enemy. Can we, like Paul, when those moments come, when the enemy is attacking us, when we're feeling torn and divided, is there a song that we can go to that turns us back to Jesus? Maybe take some time. Think about what is your song for when those attacks from the enemy come. May we always turn our eyes upon Jesus. He's the one who holds everything together. I'll see you tomorrow.